Inside these shaker incubators are flasks of insect cells bathed in insect cell food. And we're using them to make or express proteins that um, we're interested in studying. And so I focused a lot on bacterial protein expression because that's the easiest and it's the easiest to explain too. But actually most of the um, expression that we do in our lab is done in insect cells like SF9 and HI5 cells, which I'll tell you more about. And we do it using this thing called the baculovirus vector expression system or BEVS. And normally we have liters and liters of cells growing, but we don't have that many right now because there's like this crazy media shortage and it's backwarded until like August. But see, we grow them in these flasks, these one liter flasks. Um, and then we can grow um, lots of cells. So we have these flasks full of cells and then we um, use bacteria to help make this thing called a bacmid which then we put into insect cells to make a baculal virus, which is a virus that can infect the insect cells. And then the cells make those, that virus, and then they secrete it out, and it gets into that media, and it infects the other cells. And so all these cells get infected with this virus that has the instructions for making the protein that you want to study. And then all the cells start making the protein that you want to study, and then you let them make it and make it and make it, but then before they get two made and two died and stuff, then you spin them down really fast, and all the cells pull it out, and they have your protein in them, and then it's off to protein purification time. Woohoo! That's the fun part. Um, well, the really, really fun part is when you actually get to play with the proteins. But yeah, before you do all that, you have to do all this expression stuff. And so let's talk about how it works. The baculovirus expression vector system is a way that we can get insect cells to make or express proteins that we're interested in studying. And it's really great for proteins that are a little more complicated than the proteins that we normally express in bacteria, which are easier to work with. So the insect cells aren't as easy to work with, but you can get, um, it can be worth it if your protein has modifications or is bigger and stuff and the bacteria just um, can't make it very well. So these are a lot of words and this is, slide is kind of just an overview of the process and we're going to go into it in more detail. But let's start with just the name. So baculovirus, that's a virus that can infect insect cells. Expression, that's basically when we just, we're just meaning like protein making. Vector is a vehicle. Um, to, so a baculovirus, so we make a insect cell infecting virus that has the genetic instructions to get those insect cells to express a protein that we're interested in, so to get them to make that protein. This baculovirus is serving as a vector or a vehicle for getting that gene into the insect cells. And it's this kind of complicated system that has multi-steps, and we're gonna go through these steps in details. But first, just like a brief overview. So it starts off similarly to how what you would do if you were doing a bacterial cell expression. So you stick the genetic recipe for the protein you want made into a plasmid, which is a circular piece of DNA that bacteria can host. And then you um, make lots of copies of it and stuff, which bacteria are really great at. But that's a, the plasma is for the bacteria. And we need to get this into insect cells. So we need to combine it with a... Um, with the genetic instructions for making things in insect cells. And so we take this other, another um, circular piece of DNA called an acceptor bacmid. And so a bacmid is like a plasmid, except that it can be housed in both bacteria and insect cells. And so we combine, we take the gene through this um, complicated process that I can't get into here called transposition, where you have these, um, your gene is flanked by these sequences that are also um, recognized by this enzyme or protein helper called the transposin that's going to then stick the, your gene into this backmid, um, this backmid, and then this makes this bigger backmid thing that's actually holding your gene of interest. And so this backmid has the genetic instructions for making the baculovirus. And because it's a backmid, it can be hosted in both um, bacterial cells and insect cells. So we say it serves as like a shuttle vector. Um, and so at this phase, we're working with bacteria um, because they're really good at making lots of copies of the plasmids or the backmid. 
And we do this in such a way that we can use blue-white screening so that we stick, we have the gene, we stick it into the, um, the gene for an enzyme that the bacteria need to make this blue product. Um, and so we can use blue-white screening to then see if the gene, pick um, only the bacteria that have actually have taken in our back mid, um, with the insert into the back mid. So at this phase, we have this back mid that has the genetic instructions for making a baculovirus that will get insect cells to express our protein of interest. But we don't have a virus. So the virus itself actually has like a coat and all this stuff that it needs to get into other insect cells. So right now though, we don't have all that um, getting into cell equipment. So we need to help it out. And so we do this using transfection. So we take this um, so at this stage we're working with like cells plated on a dish, so these are insect cells um, such as SF9 which comes from this, um, this, these moth ovary cells and we use a transfection agent which is like a lipidy ch um, cations or charged things, it, it's this mixture of chemicals that's going to help get the back, get the back made into the cells. So we do it in this stage called transfection. And so the goal of transfection is just to get that back mid into those cells. And then the cells start making actual baculovirus, so this coated virus that can get into other insect cells. But you don't have many of the cells at this point. So what you're going to do is you can, um, so they make the baculovirus and they like secrete it into the media, so the food that it's surrounded in. And then we collect that food and we call this the V0. Then we take that V0 and we dump it onto more cells. Um, and the point of this is just to get um, more of the virus made. And so we can do this, um, we do this in flasks in a bigger shaker incubator. We call this the V1. So this is like the initial virus. And if we want to get a lot of protein, then we normally want to scale things up. So we collect that virus, so we collect the media or the, um, so the food that the cells were growing in that has all the secreted virus. And then we dump it on a lot of, um, um, a lot of liters of insect cells. And if we need a lot, a lot, then we can actually switch to these things called wave bags which, um, so industry has like giant reactor things, but this is the, the biggest thing that we have in our lab. The air, the air um, goes So it's like these bags the that can filter, shake. Filter. So how does this work in, um, what's the principle behind all of this? So the basic idea is that baculoviruses are these natural viruses that insect insects in the wild, um, but we can turn them into these protein, custom protein making factories. So they have circular double-stranded DNA genomes, which makes them really great for working with. Um, so the baculovirus's goal is to get into insect cells, um, get and make them get them to um, make more copies of this virus. Um, and so there's a couple ways that they can do this. So early in the infection, the cells make and secrete this budded virus um, that allows them to get into other cells easily um, within this within an insect. But the problem is that this makes the insect really sick, um, and so then once the insect is too sick to support the virus, the virus can't spread. So it start makes, so later in the infection, it starts making a sturdier form of the virus that can survive once the insect dies. And to make this sturdier form, it makes this protein um, called polyhedron, which allows it to make this strong, sturdy um, coat. And then when other um, insects eat, um, like contaminated leaves or whatever they're going to take in that sturdier virus and then um, get infected. But turns out that they only need that polyhedron late in the infection to make that um, strong coat. So when they're doing the budded infection stuff, they don't need it. So they can grow and survive and all of that stuff without the polyhedron gene. So what we can do is we can actually stick the gene that we want in the place of the polyhedron gene. And this way, when the cells, when the insect cells want, think that they're going to make the polyhedron, um, they're actually going to make the, um, your protein of interest. And this is really great because they normally make a lot of the polyhedron because they need to make a lot of it to make all those coats. 
but now they're gonna make your gene instead. So in order to get our gene into the cells, we start with subcloning. Um, so subcloning is basically just a word when you take a gene that's already been cloned into one place, so it's already been taken out of its natural home and stuck in, into one place, and then you stick it into another place. And so we stick the gene into this special donor plasmid. Um, so in this stage, we're just doing typical um, bacteria um, molecular cloning work and so antibiotic selection and all that um, just to make sure that we have the gene of interest in this acceptor plasmid. And so this plasmid is special in that it's flanked by these T7 transposes um, recognition sequences and so a transposase is this um, enzyme or protein um, reaction helper thingy that can actually like take a gene from one place and stick it somewhere else if those places are flanked by these special sequences that it recognizes. And so what we do is with we have this donor plasmid with our gene that we've um, subcloned into. Then we have another um, acceptor backmid which has the baculovirus DNA. And the sites that the your gene is going to get inserted into by the tree 7 transposase is um, smack dab in the middle of the lac Z gene, which the bacteria need to make beta galactosidase, which they need to make this um, turn this white product to where this colorless product is blue. And so, well, if you disrupt that blue maker gene, then the colonies, the bacteria can't make that blue product, so when you plate the bacteria on these plates, then the colonies are going to stay white if they have the gene of interest. And um, the so you stick them into these special bacteria that have um, another plasmid that actually has the instructions for making the T7 transposase that can do that reaction swapping. So you, <clears throat> so the bacteria such as like DH10 multibac, they have the um, T7 instructions and they have this acceptor back made and then you just transform so you stick into the, to it your donor plasmid. Then those are going to combine, so you end up with this um, back made that has your gene of interest. So we, stu we usually stick our gene of interest in the place of the polyhedron. Um, gene, which we talked about before, which the which the virus uses to make that sturdy coat protein. But, it, so it only expresses that protein in the late phase of the infection. And so we can get a readout as to when the protein, when the insect is actually in that late phase, and um, whether the back mid got into this insect cells at all, using a reporter. And so we have there's another gene called P10 that's also expressed in this late phase and that the insect cells don't really need for just growing in cells. And so we can replace <clears throat> the second gene with a reporter like YFP, which is basically the yellow fluorescence protein. So it'll get it gets made at the same time that our proteins get that are of interest under the polyhedron promoter is getting made. And so this gives serves as a readout as whether initially it tells us whether the virus got into cells and um, then if, when they've entered that very late phase. Um, and that means that hopefully our protein is getting made. And so we can monitor the expression. Um, we look under our microscope and so and during all the phases we want to be um, keeping a close eye on the cells and making sure they look healthy. Um, counting them to see when we need to split them, so when we need to um, divide it and add more media so that they don't overgrow. Um, and we can use um, special light that when we glow it, um, if the cells are making YFP, they're going to glow. And then when we make our protein, it's actually, um, it's pretty cool because even though our protein isn't yellow, you still, you're still co-expressing this yellow protein. And so the liquid is going to look really like fluorescent yellow, which is cool. But going back to the store, we still needed to get this back made into cells. So we start out using um, cells. Um, so these cells are taken, are derived from insects. But we grow them just as cells. Not We're not like actually working with insects. And so we start off growing them in like dishes or plates um, where there's a layer of cells stuck onto this plate um, bottom. And then later on when we have more we grow them in flasks or bags as we saw before.
And so we start with the plated cells because it's harder to get the back made into the cells than it is to get like the virus into the cells because the virus has all that machinery that it needs to get into the cells. Um, so we need to help it out. Um, so we use this transfection reagent, which we discussed before, which has like lipids and charged things that can like um, cations that neutralize the charge of the um, of the BACME DNA and help it get into the cells. And so some of these cells are going to take in the BACME and start making the virus, and then they'll turn um, green or yellow like we saw in the um, previous slide. And so then at this stage, they're making this um, but virus like it has a coat so it can get into uninfected cells. Um, and then those can start making and excreting the liquid cell into the cells, um, into the media, and then we let them make lots of the virus and then what we do is we want to collect that virus so we can infect more cells to make protein because at this phase we just have a little bit of infected cells on a plate which don't have enough to um, like do anything useful in terms of making protein. So we collect the secreted virus, we suck it up in um, a little syringe and we filter it through um, this filter to get rid of any cells that we accidentally sucked up and so now we have this um, baculovirus. So before we had a bacmid, now we have a baculovirus so it has the coat and stuff that the virus needs to infect other cells. So this is our V0 and we can keep it in the fridge until we're ready to use it. And we're going to use it for making more virus. Yeah, eventually we'll get to protein making, but first we need a lot of virus. Um, and so we're going to work, start, now we're going to move from the plated cells to working in suspension. So in cells that are actually like in a flask. So we take some of this V0 virus and we add it to some cells in the flask and then the virus gets into the cells and the cells start making the virus and so you make a lot of virus. Um, so we need to separate the virus from all of the cells and so instead of syringing it up now, we, um, it's easier because, or kind of easier, depends on what you look at, how you look at it, but right now our cells are, aren't attached to a plate so we spin them down in a centrifuge, which spins them really fast. The heavier cells are going to, because the cells are heavier, they're going to um, sink and pe form this pellet. We can pour off the media and get this virus or V1. And so we can also keep this um, pellet, there'll be some protein in there, but if we want a lot of protein, we're going to need to scale up. So now what we're after is this, um, a lot of protein. So we take this V1, so now we have a ton of virus, which was our goal. Well, it was our initial goal, but our goal is to get lots of protein. And so we take this um, virus and we infect lots of flasks um, filled with insect cells, and we get them to make lots of protein, which we can monitor by watching the YFP. And we let them grow typically for um, somewhere between two and four days, depending on the protein. So we're monitoring the cells, making sure they look happy. Um, and this, there's some like optimization, trouble, troubleshooting, that sort of thing. Um, so that each protein sometimes likes a little different. But typically what we'll do is we'll like start an expression on a Monday afternoon and harvest it on a Thursday morning or a Tuesday afternoon and a Friday morning, that sort of thing. Um, and then we spin this down, and this time we don't care about that media anymore. So this time what we really want is that pellet. So what does harvesting actually look like? It's a bit of a crazy day as um, my mom took these pictures several years ago, so I thought you guys might appreciate um, seeing what it actually looks like. So thankfully we have um, lab technicians who take care of most of our insect cell expression and our, um, but we do some of it ourselves and this was me harvesting cells a few years ago. And so I have all these flasks. What I do is I pour it into these bottles, then I spin it in the centrifuge and then when it's spinning I need to prepare to, for the resuspension. So basically once we pellet it down then we resuspend it in, um, buffer, so pH stabilized salt water, and 
Um, so we have that pellet, and then we like um, pipette in the buff. We add buffer, and we pipette it up and down, and vortex it to shake it and get it all um, resuspended in this fresh buffer that we can then freeze. Um, we want to make sure that it's safe when we later go to break it open um, or lyse it, and so we add um, a protease inhibitor. So protease is a protein chewers, and so we add these um, this cocktail of chemicals that inhibit proteases so that later when we lyse the cells open they're going to come out into this um, less harmful environment where the proteins won't just get chewed up immediately. So we, we prepare that while the cells are spinning and then once they're done spinning we want to um, collect the pellets. So we I'm going to pour off the media but first I always like to look and make sure that they pellet it out okay and look how the pellet looks. Sometimes they're a little not stuck well and you might need to pellet it, um, centrifuge it again a little longer. Um, so take a look and then pour off the media. Add the buffer. I'm working on ice to protect the protein. Um, vortex it so this like shaker platform it's going to get the cells all resuspended. Make sure they're all resuspended and then I'm going to pipette it into um, falcon tubes and freeze them in liquid nitrogen. Now I have these um, pellets of the protein that I can store in the minus 80 freezer until I'm ready to use them. And but so that's kind of the end of the story for the protein at this point, but it's not the end of the story for me because now I have to go clean all those flasks. This is a different um, day when I had a lot of um, harvesting to do, so a lot of cleaning. And then, of course, the happiness comes back later when you actually get to break open those cells, so lice them, um, and then you spin it in an even faster centrifuge to pellet the cell bits from the soluble stuff which has your protein um, and then you can use column various forms of column chromatography to send that um, lysate so the insect cell um, so everything that was in the insect cells is now um, after you lyse it it's all in this solution and it contains your proteins but it also contains other proteins and other stuff and so you can use um, column chromatography where you run that mixture of proteins through different um, columns formed with little beads called resin which have different properties and then these properties are going to um, allow these beads to interact differently with different proteins so the proteins will travel through at different speeds through these different resins and so, so if your protein um, like is more positively charged it'll get stuck more to a negatively charged um, beads and then it'll take more salt to compete it off and that sort of thing um, so we can separate proteins based on their properties and how fast they flow through these different columns and this allows us to purify proteins and then we can play with them um, so again, the idea with the baculovirus expression vector system is so the, it's more difficult than bacterial cell expression. So it typically takes a couple weeks to go from actually starting the cloning process to having a um, large scale expression. But if your protein doesn't express well in bacteria for some reason, like um, which is common if you're trying to express a protein that is typically made in like a human or other mammal sort of cell um, that ha and has like post-translational modifications, so things like phosphorylation, glycosylation, um, and or it needs like help folding with special chaperones that only the eukaryotic cells have. So insect cells are better for this. But insects, so insect cells have the ability to do like glycosylation and phosphorylation and stuff, but they don't always have the, they were exactly the same as you would get in like a human cell or another mammal cell. So often if people want to express um, certain proteins where they, that it's really important that they have like the proper modifications. So you can express in mammalian cell lines, um, like CHO. Um, or even HEK cells. And but so typically mammalian cell expression is even more expensive than insect cell expression. Um, but it's useful if you need that sort of um, specific modifications type of thing. And so I use insect cell expression a lot 
um, our lab uses it a lot. We typically start off trying bacterial expression because it's typically easier um, and cheaper if it works for your protein, but if it doesn't, then you're just wasting a lot of time and resources, um, and so then we switch to insect cell expression. And but so recently we've actually been having a big problem getting our insect cell expression media um so it's back ordered until like august right now um which is causing some problems and so we're trying to switch to different media and hopefully that all works out um so hope that helps you understand um the baculovirus expression vector system